When the target comes within range, a missile is fired and flies up the guidance beam from a coated carbon dioxide laser. case, the target was a QF-86 Sabre. This tank is caught in the crosshairs of the optical sight. The blast fragmentation warhead used against aircraft is detonated by a proximity fuse. But for use against tanks, a shape charge is also provided, detonating on impact. Missile speed is over Mach 3. Armor penetration is exceptional as witnessed by these test slabs pierced by a shaped charge. Recorded by an ultra-fast camera, this side view shows the deadly penetrating efficiency of the star streak. Probably the only completely developed anti-tank helicopter outside the Soviet Union. The McDonnell Douglas AH-564 Apache can carry 16 powerful Hellfire missiles. Made by Rockwell, Hellfire weighs a little more than 100 pounds and homes on laser light reflected from the target. The laser light originates from a laser designator used by frontline troops or by the laser of the Apache itself. A version of Hellfire is also being developed with imaging infrared or combined infrared and radar homing. The Hellfire can be carried by the Marine Corps EH-1 Cobra. Hellfire can also be carried on the UH-60SA Blackhawk with up to 16 loaded onto the external storage support system. most numerous and perhaps even most important of all Western tactical air-to-ground missiles is the Maverick. More than 50,000 have been produced by Hughes Aircraft. Raytheon also serves as second source producer of one particular version. The original AGM-65A is guided by an operator who views the target through a television camera located in the missile's nose. From the start, Maverick has been a precision weapon and the Thunderbolt II is just one of 13 types of aircraft from which it can be launched. AGM-65B has improved optics, while the AGM-65C and E versions are laser-guided Mavericks. The E version can be devastating, delivering a large 300-pound blast fragmentation warhead. These versions home automatically on reflected or scattered laser light. When the laser designator is ground-mounted, it allows the aircraft to fire and forget, turning away and avoiding the target's defenses. Such missiles essentially cannot miss. Fired from A-10s during Desert Storm, Mavericks were coldly efficient in destroying entire Iraqi tank columns. Raytheon also makes the AGM-65D and G, which have an imaging infrared guidance seeker. The AGM-65F is the Navy anti-ship version, using an infrared guidance system incorporating anti-ship logic circuits. 
Early versions of the Maverick weigh 450 pounds and have a shaped charged warhead for piercing armor or concrete fortifications. The various models can be selected for particular operational situations and target types. Early experience with American anti-radar missiles was poor, but much better results have been achieved with the AGM-88 HARM missile. HARM stands for High Speed Anti-Radiation. It was developed by Texas Instruments in cooperation with the U.S. Naval Air Systems Command and Naval Weapons Center. Great efforts have been made to achieve a reliable weapon that can be launched over the horizon or used as a quick reaction weapon against all kinds of hostile radar. Among the aircraft deploying harm are the Navy's EA-6B, the A-6E, the Air Force's F-15E, and the Air Force's F-4G Advanced Wild Weasel. Radar-killing harms deployed from wild weasels were instrumental in blinding Iraqi radar during the Desert Storm campaign. Each harm missile weighs a little over 800 pounds and has a maximum range of 15 miles. The guidance section has a broadband radio frequency receiver, which allows each missile to detect and destroy virtually any kind of radar. Another advanced feature is a digital autopilot. During America's confrontation with Libya, several harms were fired against missile guidance radars. Harm often actually hit the target antenna itself. Despite the fact that its basic design is quite old, of all the West's air-to-air -air missiles, none can even come close to the capabilities of the AIM-54 Phoenix. Hughes Aircraft has been steadily updating this weapon. This is the latest, the AIM-54C version, which was flight tested from 1979 to 1985. With a launch weight of over 1,000 pounds, Phoenix is bigger than any other non-Soviet air-to-air missile. It was the first air-to-air -air missile in service with an active radar seeker in the nose. Phoenix can fly over 80 miles toward the target using a strapped-down inertial reference and digital autopilot. Then it switches on its radar and homes unerringly toward the selected target. The missile is used solely by the F-14A and F-14D Tomcat interceptors. By far the most numerous air-to-air -air missile outside the Soviet Union is the AIM-9 Sidewinder. First developed on a shoestring budget more than 35 years ago, Sidewinder has progressed through many versions and can be fired from almost every Western combat aircraft. All Sidewinders have a body like a length of 5-inch pipe. The guidance sections, however, are visibly different. The AIM-9P, known as Papa, can go on an F-5E launching rail, easily fitted by hand. Another version is the AIM-9L, or Lima, which can be carried by an F-14A. This series has long-span pointed control fins. The Lima version introduced a more powerful annular blast fragmentation warhead with an improved fuse. Against the Lima, a QF-102 target drone doesn't stand a chance. By far the most important Western air-to-air -air missile is AMRAM, or Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. Switch assigned departure control frequency. You're cleared for takeoff. Designated AIM-120A, AMRAM has self-contained inertial and active radar guidance. Unlike the old Sparrow, the launch aircraft doesn't have to keep flying toward the enemy, illuminating the target with radar energy. AMRAM's own radar makes it a fire-and-forget weapon. It is well suited to the F-16 and is also carried on the F-15 and F-18 aircraft. It can be mounted on almost all Western fighters, including Britain's Tornado F-3 and Sea Harrier. 